a warrior within or two thrones? Two thrones sounds... Sounds like the one I'm thinking about. Actually, I'm gonna check right now. Uh, I heard there's a new Prince of Persia game coming uh, that's out right now. But it's a 2D game. And I'm not even gonna talk about it. Fuck that shit. Yeah. Two thrones. Two characters. Evil and good, maybe. Yeah, dude. Oh, boy. 2005. Yep. I think I played this one around the same time that I played Devil May Cry 3. Which is around 2008, 2009. Yeah, dude, this game is good. This is worth a playthrough. Um, the, the older ones are okay. But if you want a, a cool... Dude, just look at this badass picture. I don't know how to fucking show it. It's worth a playthrough for sure, man. I think I'm gonna... I don't know if I have it or not, but I think I'm gonna get it. Dude. So while playing, you can like switch into like Super Saiyan mode. But it's this demon guy. But there's a catch. While you're playing as this demon guy, you lose life. So you can only use him for a limited time, but he has crazy abilities. Uh, and I remember the cutscene being very good, or the trailer. Like, some good ass trailer. It's a PlayStation 2 game? Damn, I'm old. Let's see. Uh. Mine? Oh yeah, so there are three games. Uh, the Sands of Time. Uh, Warrior Within. Warrior Within. Did that one come out before or after Two Thrones? This one is 2005. Warrior Within. Came out before. So Two Thrones is the third. Two Thrones is the, th is the third one. I, do I don't remember this one at all. Yeah, but, but Two Thrones, dude, you can rewind time and shit. It's crazy. It's such a good game. I can't believe they didn't return to this format uh, release the new Prince of Persia with like a third person RPG type of game format would have been so good it's probably better in my memory than it is now I remember this intro oh my it was kind of goofy too Looking for the trailer, I can't play it for some reason. Aha! Shut up! Okay, okay. Yeah! Oh, dude, you know it's old because it's 360p. That's okay. He thought he had left his past behind him. He thought he had a future. He was wrong. The battle has just begun. The Tower, Babylon. Dude, speaking of this tower, that's exactly what I'm at right now in Devil May Cry 3. A tower that's based on... Uh, 
Babylon. Bro, it's all coming together. There must be another way. Let time run its course. I will not lose you. I promise I'll come back. Damn, why does it sound like that? Damn, it looks so goofy. I remember one... One part, when the Dark Prince appears. Wait for it, wait for it. Himself, dude. I trust you. Is this the right trailer? That's the wrong trailer. That's not the right trailer. There's one called Forgotten Sands. Two Thrones cutscenes. Maybe it's a cutscene, not a trailer. No, it's a trailer. Yeah. It's a trailer. Because it shows... Whoa, 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 whoa. Remastered. Oh yeah, it is. Oh, I'm so... It's, uh, it's, uh, okay, it's so fucking loud. Wait, wait, wait. No spoilers. Don't look, don't look. Okay, no, it's not this. It's not this one. It's this one. I think. I I can tell from that screenshot. When Ubisoft was good. Feels bad, man. I thought my homeland would receive yeah. you with open arms. Yeah. But my only welcome was fire and arrows. Nothing in my kingdom arrows. the way it was. Not even me. This is the one. No more suffering. I can stop this. Stay back. Watch. Bam. You get to do so, some crazy ass moves as the Dark Prince. So Assassin's Creed 1 was apparently based off of Prince of Persia, which is cool. Oh yeah, this, this scene I remember. This shot. So fucking cool. Holy cinema, man. What a shot. I want to see it again. The rotating camera. He flips around. He's a different man. Bam! Yep. Though I remembered him fighting here more. When he landed, like against those guys, maybe that's in the gameplay. <laughs> Blessed times when Ubisoft made good games. And not dumb Assassin's Creed. They literally killed Prince of Persia for a lot for a long while just to do Assassin's Creed devs. 
making the best transitions and shit for cutscenes back in the early 2000s. Yeah, the 2000s, man. When it came to cutscenes. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Good shit. Now making everything shit. Yeah. They're pretty much uh, doing cash grabs. Taking a lot of shortcuts. Um... Like, you can just tell they don't give a fuck anymore. I don't think Assassin's Creed was uh, stupid, though. I think it was good until... I think, for me, it was good until Origins. Because Assassin's Creed Origins is when they changed the whole gameplay aspect of the game. And then they started to move in the RPG direction. But I always loved it. Like, the first game with Altair, the Ezio trilogy was so good. Oh man, and the music. Playing in, in uh, Renaissance, man, I Italy. Uh, and then the modern day twist was always uh, interesting. And then Assassin's Creed 3 was interesting as well. 4 was a classic, Black Flag. Which is still better than Ubisoft's recent pirate game. <laughs> Can you believe that they had a perfect pirate game? And they made a new pirate game, multiplayer pirate game, that had less features than that old one? God damn. And Assassin's Creed 5, gameplay-wise, for me, was amazing. Because it had that dense city atmosphere to it. The story was meh, was okay. But the gameplay was mwah, chef's kiss. You can still find like videos of people making crazy moves, parkour moves. Um, and what... After that was Syndicate in London, or Victorian era, where you play as the twins and switch between them. Dude, I used to be a big Assassin's Creed fan. So, I played a lot of those games. Um, that one was okay. It wasn't really my favorite. And then the open world RPG came in the form of Origins and what came after that. And they kind of had to start from scratch. They basically said fuck you to the old f fan base. And they wanted to cater to a different fan base. Some people were, were like, eh, okay. Other people were like, fuck that shit. I'm jumping boat. And I played Origins, I played Odyssey. Hundreds of hours. So, gave it a try. The new formula. But in the end, I decided, old Assassin's Creed, that's where, that's where the good shit is. But now Assassin's Creed is the crazy gay fantasy of a delusional historian. <laughs> that's one way to describe it. Nah. See, to me, Assassin's Creed ended with I would say what's that game called again the one after unity shit I just mentioned it the one in the Victorian era Br the British one where he plays twins uh, uh, no I was gonna say Odyssey but uh, that is very wrong. Syndicate, yes, thank you, thank you. I think because it still had that stealth, dense city parkour mechanic to it. I mean, you could still play as an assassin, can you imagine that? That used to be a thing. You get to play in a, as an assassin in an Assassin's Creed game? What? 
It's pretty much a rare thing nowadays. The recent one you see, they're gonna make you play as a fucking samurai. But I guess they make you, or give you the option to switch to a, a quote-unquote assassin. Just to appease the old fans, but... Damn, they think their fans are stupid, and some of them are. Just because they put an assassin as a side character, they think they can call it an Assassin's Creed game. Lul. But anyway, so as I was saying, to me, Assassin's Creed after Syndicate does not exist. So, I agree when you say dumb Assassin's Creed, Ubisoft shit, yep. After Syndicate, changing the formula, ruining the story, ruining the gameplay, making it fucking damage numbers, and each item has to be leveled, and you have to have a different level before you do a mission, and... Oh my god, just ruined it. So yeah, Assassin's Creed for me... 10 out of 10. And this is a, a largely nostalgia speaking. 10 out of 10. I would say... Um, 1, 2... And 2 includes the... Uh, Ezio Trilogy. That's it. I think those are my favorites. 3, Black Flag, Unity, and Syndicate are okay. Like, those can still be considered Assassin's Creed games. Those, those were still enjoyable. But anything after that, pretty much for me, was fucking trash. Like, they should... They just don't know. They want to make open-world RPG games... But they want to put assassins in them, but there are no fucking assassins. They should just fucking forget about the Assassin's Creed logo and make open world RPG bullshit. But now they're tiptoeing between the two and, and both, both sides of the coin are taking a hit. Uh, Black Flag, best Assassin's Creed that would speak, yeah. I mean, objectively speaking, Black Flag on its own is a masterpiece. God damn, that was such a good game. I rem I'm, I'm just thinking back when I was playing it on my laptop. My shitty laptop. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is sad to think how good games used to be. Same with Prince of Persia, man. I mean, look at this. Now, it looks old as shit, but... I think my internet is trash, but... What the fuck? Jesus Christ, I just got jump scared by an ad. Okay. Damn it, YouTube. But yeah, the new... The new Prince of Persia got the shit treatment of making it... Downgrading, pretty much, the what, what, it, what it once was. Is it this one, The Lost Crown? Fucking making it a cartoon game? God damn, Ubisoft. Like, it looks cool. It has art, but... What is this, man? A fucking mobile game? We weren't, they weren't prepared for me. Look at this CG bullshit. Hip-hop music? Oh my god. I like hip hop, but putting it in a game like this, like as a trailer in a. Oh my. What is this? Like. Oh, oh my god. If, if I were on top of fucking Ubisoft, I would fire so many people. Yeah, this guy got it right. You must respect Ubisoft's. Ubisoft's cons consistency. I can't talk. 
uh, killing every franchise they get their hands on. Asa from Assassin's Creed with no assassin to Prince of Persia with no prince. I did, I, this is the first time I just watched the uh, clips of this game. And now I'm looking at the trailer, the gameplay trailer. Music shit, art style bullshit, 2D game, fucking mobile game bullshit. And before we had like a third person RPG action game. Uh, they just needed to update, like use the same formula but update the graphics. Use new, uh, you know, the new engine and shit. Like, we go from this, awesome parkour, you have been infected by the sands of time, as I to fucking 2D bullshit. Maybe it's the Look at this. Maybe it's all the time you've spent amongst the sands. Oh, this guy's speedrunning. I hate speedrunners. No offense, but I just don't like people who skip stories all so much. It's, it drives me nuts. And then fucking running like this the whole time. I can't. I, I. It's not for me. It's cool that they can beat games in a fast way, though. It's pretty cool. I just don't like the way it's done. Anyways, besides the point. <sighs> and then the new Assassin's Creed game. Uh. Yeah. The uh, the samurai game. A black samurai in feudal Japan. There we start with the inaccuracy. A game that focused on being historically accurate throws away history in favor of political acceptance. Well, apparently, from what I read, is it's um, the samurai character existed in history. Apparently, he was a, a real character, and they're just ma basically making him. Like giving him the spotlight and giving him a story, which is alright. Like you can give historical figures, a fiction, put them in a fictional story. But I don't think that's why the, that's why fans are upset. I think they're upset because, I mean, a samurai? I mean, they released a gameplay trailer where he just he just goes and fucking beats some motherfucker in broad daylight wearing full samurai armor now granted apparently he's not the only character you play as but still I can't get this gameplay to work. Um, but yeah. They got the setting right. I mean... For years, and including me, I always wanted a feudal Japan Assassin's Creed game. But by the time we got here, the franchise has already been fucking destroyed, man. Oh shit! Get to use this chain to solve puzzles and shit. It is, if you want it to be. I do not, but you will. Damn, Why this looks old as shit. Happening to me? You have been infected by the sands of time, as I am sure you have noticed. Maybe it's the dagger. Maybe it's all the time you spent amongst the sands. <laughs> amongst the Empress. Ooh. Either way. Prince of Persia got killed after the third game for a while. Because Ubisoft said, yeah, POP uh, team goes to Assassin's Creed. Prince of Persia team goes to Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I don't even know what happened after 
this Prince of Persia game. I stopped following uh, this game after playing this one. So I have no idea if they even released the one after this or not. Um, but there's the recent one that they released. That one I heard about. Transformation! Now he's back to normal. Water seems to fight this corruption. Why did you hide this from me? What? And ruin all the fun? When the prince was struck by the sands of time, something was broken within. Something strange and cunning. Something dark. What's happening? Well, that certainly went according to plan, did it not? You really should know by now that entering portals made of sand only leads to trouble. I will simply have to resort to a more traditional form of transport. Hopefully with greater Damn. Wait, wait, wait. Is he gonna go do like a special attack here? That would be cool. Already, this reminds me of that uh, part in uh, Assassin's Creed Revelations in the Ezio trilogy, the third one, where he also rides a card like this. You can tell it was made by the same studio. Same ideas. We made it. All yours. <laughs> oh yeah, and they made that uh, Viking Assassin's Creed game, which I also could not get into. Like, a Viking game is cool, but an Assassin's Creed Viking game? the fuck? Wait, what the fuck? Did he just land on a horse? What? I am easy. The once bright and vibrant streets of Babylon now stood all but deserted. Its inhabitants utter dead. Babylon. Those left behind suffered terribly, captured, tortured, and transformed. But the prince did not notice this. So focused was he on the vizier. Hardcore parkour, baby. I'm impressed. Oh, good. Your opinion means a great deal to me. Babylon's defenders still live. The city is not yet taken. Perhaps father is among them. Heh, <laughs> 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 I remember this. Some lady character shoots this those arrows. Someone helping. Who is there? You have done me a great service. Show yourself that I might thank you. So very strange. I wonder. No, it is silly to think such things. I don't like the looks of this. This thing was once a man. He was there when Kylina died. Big boy. Big ass! I wasn't looking there, you were looking there. We are free! We are free! 
Look at the cutscene, man. Look at the the movement. The fucking. The prince fled from Just the arena. it was nice and smooth, man. Unwanted attention. Fearful that they might realize he was becoming a sand monster. Now this is only story. Here we go again. I took it from the vizier. Just can't see much gameplay. Yep, that's the archer. Archer. Slave my people, imprisoned me, and all in the name of becoming some kind of god. I know too well what he is capable of, but I intend to find him and punish him for what he has done to my. Luck, it will probably trigger some terrible trap, or summon sand monsters, or bring about the end of the world. Would it kill you to show a little optimism? Damn, was experience is taught. Was it always this goofy? This prince is so close. Let us make him suffer. Oh shit. Damn. And here you have a timer. Babylon's last line of defense fallen. These men served my family. I don't remember how it ended though. With their defeat, the city is fully in the hands of the vizier. Or no more delays. Good. Put her in her place. <laughs> These are your people. You are their prince. And yet you would leave them to suffer? About what you said. And you are right. <laughs> Can't you see we're in the middle of a conversation? If you really do desire death, kindly wait your turn. Yeah, we're talking here. What the I fuck? <laughs> most of the guards. It should be safe. Who the fuck was Go that character? Free them. I will deal with her. Wonderful work. You return to save Farah and then send her back into the thick of it while you run after this one. My hero! You know as well as I do that the brothel is no longer dangerous. But if I do not kill that sand monster, she will pose a threat to Farah. <laughs> no! No! Not now! Damn, what the fuck? In the middle of a fight? He's like, she, let me get a piece of this. Action. That's one horny motherfucker. for every time someone said that to me. Oh, I do. I do. It is good to see you safe. Chase. I think you're taking this hero business a little too far. You cannot kill these creatures, but we can slow them. Go, oh, Prince! Find the Vizier and finish him! So that this nightmare might finally end! Lord of the Rings survives here. Damn! From behind the back! was cast by his <laughs> death and <laughs> Say hello to your darkness. Gets cut off. Farah, distanced from the vizier, he had been warned that his journey would not end well. His corrupt half, that cruel and cares. I shall enjoy it. Hmm. What the not fuck? The homecoming you expected. You will pay for what you have done to my people. They live among mindless monsters in service to your madness. Madness? 
Alright. Well, that was, uh... Not gonna spoil too much. Of a... 20, almost 20 year old game. But yeah, that was a cool nostalgia trip. Hello, welcome to my no damage play. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now that that's over with, we can keep going. No damage, damn. Now this is a kind of a watchworthy playthrough. Like shit, how does he do it? Not the speedrun fucking skip everything, glitch everywhere, kind of a playthrough. Fuck that shit. But it's cool though, it's cool, it's cool. Assassin's Creed Syndicate. An idea of how these yeah, in this game you had you could switch between two main characters, which is cool. I found that both of them uh, complemented each other. Uh, Evie and Jacob, I guess the other guy's name is. The enemies were copy pasted though. And the city felt. This is when you meet Charles Dickens. Uh, Jacob a bit slams empty. into him, and the pages of uh, a book called Drood fly all over the place. And this is a reference. To and you could not ride a horse singularly. You had to fucking ride carriages. No r normal horse riding. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, the last decent Assassin's Creed game. Or you so actually had to fucking use stealth. I have to make a choice, you know, do I want to kill the brute or do I want to kill the other guy? And honestly, I just go for the brute because he is far more dangerous in combat. And now what I do is Damage I run sponges, around man. to the other side of this guy. And the reason why I do this should be pretty obvious, but in case it isn't, it's because when I attack him... They did release Assassin's Creed Mirage recently, which was apparently a... When you finish Assassin's Creed... Apparently it's a... It was supposed to be an expansion... For... Valhalla... But then they ended up making it into its own mini... Mini entry to the Assassin's Creed franchise. And they tried to. They tried to make it an Assassin's Creed game. Did promise movement much better than the but last the damage was already done. Early on, that city design takes life inspiration from Unity, which it does. When you play, you can feel that Baghdad obviously follows some pathing mindsets from Unity, especially. On Unity the had the best city, though, in terms of navigation and density. Oh, so good. The only thing that Unity was missing, two things, three things, nah, two things, ambient music, which was amazing in the first uh, Assassin's Creed games, and a strong story. Shockingly, this might be the AC game with the most honest marketing in a long time. It never promised anything revolutionary. Yeah, the combat in this game was a bit. Uh, speak on it, but what I've been told is that the difference between these two difficulties is unbelievably large. On hard, Basim is not a fighter. Mirage doesn't want you fighting. It wants you in the shadows, staying unseen. Uh, that's good. If you're exposed and find too much pressure on you, it wants you to run away. That's a good thing. Approach with strategy, patience, and cunning. Combat can still strategy. be Strategy. I found myself thinking so many times, I feel like this is what they wanted Unity to be, except it actually works and isn't broken here. The downside to this is the general speed of combat, which can be accelerated if you creatively use your tools, but compared to something like Ghost of Tsushima on lethal, you do get this yearning that Basim- Yeah, Ghost of Tsushima, man. That is the one and only Feudal Japan game that I, uh, have and will probably enjoy for a while.
them could do a bit more damage. One of the first things I decided to try was on hard. I doubt that Assassin's Creed, what is it called? Shadows, the one in feudal Japan, is going to be as good as Ghost of Tsushima. Again, it's because they're trying to do two things at the same time. They want to do an open world game story with this with a compelling story, but they're they're holding themselves back by putting assassin shit in the in that game because they pretty much destroyed pretty much destroyed the Assassin's Creed franchise. But they need the money. And no Assassin's Creed fans, no money equals no money. So they just gotta put that logo and title on everything. But in the end, the game suffers because of that. And then by extension, the, ga the fans won't be happy. And that's been happening for like a decade now. With six guys, two of whom are specials like heavies, and kill them all if I'm actually good. Or will this. But yeah. Ghost of Tsushima is the feudal Japan Assassin's Creed game that we've always wanted. And Ghost of Tsushima, the funny thing about that game is you could play as a ninja, like an assassin. And it didn't even have anything to do with Assassin's Creed. And still it was better. And will be better than Assassin's Creed Shadows. System break and make that impossible. And the answer was, yes, I could overcome them all in a win, but never efficiently. It was, it was focused on samurai, hit but it still gave it you the slow. gameplay freedom. Your stamina in combat is precious and you're only reliable to be an assassin if you wanted. Parry normal attacks. And still, I could live and win. It's possible, which means it's fair, but it's not something you'll ever be fast at if you choose to fight honestly, which resonates with yeah. the fantasy. This game feels fight. empty to me. I never played it. I watched a little bit. And I'm not just referring to Boston's archetype as a street thief and later an assassin. I mean it just feels soulless. Like a rogue would, or you're going to either die or waste your own time. On hard, combat has so much friction and pushes back so forcefully the fluidity of an AC brother. Like this just looks like Origins, Odyssey, Valhalla. This is the kind of gameplay I'm seeing. I like that it's city uh, focused and stealth focused. I just don't like that kind of gameplay. Brotherhood or Ghost of Tsushima is worlds away. Fucking Da uh, enemies damage sponges. It's not something you're gonna find if you're a good hearted swordsman going at your foes with just the steel in your hands. It takes so long that if you're fighting any more than two, maybe three guards, you should consider using tools like, like look at how janky it looks. Attacks, or literally just leave. Only the very end it looks decent. And actually play them all out, you're gonna be playing so slowly it'll leave you exhausted. Bossom can fight and kill in combat. The animations for a lot of his finishers are genuinely very cool, though they do desync and disjoint sometimes. AC That's is all right. so freaking back. With all that said, combat is a fallback mm. option, a soft fail state. In a like it looks like he's attacking a f the fucking so air, you know? Describe how it works. Every you see? That has a comp combat use that isn't using a tool called stamina. This is the you see? While the enemy is attacking, he's getting attacked. So the main character is attacking the enemy while the enemy is attacking. But that does not stop the enemy from attacking. He doesn't even feel it. It's only the health bar that goes down a bit. Which is very annoying. Every action very immersion breaking. That has a combat use that isn't used see that? I want to see it again because it's so fucking annoying. Maybe it used to happen before but like it shouldn't happen anymore. Look. Bam, bam. No, it's not here. When, when does he do it? That was a nice parry. See, that's nice. You parry. He's like, oh shit, what the fuck? And it opens up a window of attack. I don't know where that moment was. Here. See? Hit him twice. It's like nothing happened. Look. One. Two. 
And I hate that they add this freeze frame bullshit while, while you're attacking. See how he stops? Uh, uh. And still gets hit. That's fucking bullshit. What should happen is the enemy should, while he's getting hit, he should stagger. Like, oh shit, I just got hit. Like, notice here, he just got hit twice. Zero, zero reaction. Look at that. Look at this guy. See? Just goes back into the default sword stance. Well, he just got hit twice. Like, what the fuck is this? See? Nothing happened. He just lost a bit of health. But you do you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know because they want you to have all this bullshit HUD on the screen. Like there, that's what should happen. He should react to your attacks, basically. The enemy should react to your attacks. Unless they're like very heavy, you know, heavily armored enemies. You attack those with light attacks and they're like, oh shit, that's nothing, man. I'm just gonna keep attacking you. That's fine. You know, it has places where it makes sense. Look at that. See that? With the not attacking him with fucking two swords. And look how much damage he lost. I don't know about the difficulty, but... Things like this, you, I, d I didn't care before. But after a while, you just start to notice bullshit like this. And you're like, yeah. It's clear that the devs are making these games for casuals. Who want to press buttons and not care what happens, you know. Like, see how he went uh, left and then uh, right when he got hit? That That's cool. That's what should happen. Uh, left, right, uh, bam. And then he goes back, staggers. See, that's perfect. Look, left guy, he got he got a super power powered up charge charge attack, right? Unblockable because it's red. Another thing that, you know, just fucking breaks your immersion. Gets hit twice, once, twice, bam, nothing happens. Look, one, two, nothing happens. Because why? He's running the animation. The code is running. Nothing interrupts that code, which is very, very fucking lazy. Damn, slowing it down was, a not, was not a good idea, because then you get to see it. You get to notice how fucking shitty it is. Most of the times, not always. Like this type of combat? For casuals? Cool. Interrupt them other than dropping the tool. Fossum always fights with his sword and dagger, both of which you can swap both for other for swords and daggers. His sword dictates HP damage on attacks, and his dagger defines posture damage on parries. Unless I miss something, there's no other way to meaningfully decrease enemy defense except parrying. So Literally just press hack and slash, kind of like what I'm doing here. And uh, Devil May Cry uh, 3. But in this game, it works because it's supposed to be that way. It's not supposed to be fucking realistic. You do this. And the enemy still runs their animation. And they still attack you. But it's okay. Because it's fucking meant to be this way. It's supposed to be a funny game where you, you just smash buttons and you attack. And you don't expect this bullshit. So offense doesn't reward you, unlike Sekiden. And the only reason why this this is a problem is because it used to be better. That's why. That's the whole problem. Otherwise, there would be no reason to mention it at all. It used to be so much better. The combat. Uh, I mean, shit. Look at the combat in uh, Unity, for example. Even Assassin's Creed 3. There were so many cool uh, moments in the combat. 
that makes you think, wow, you could actually do that in those games? But then you look at this, and you're like, well, damn, where did that love go? You know, where did that attention to detail go? Pressing the attack and wagering my stamina offensively actually did something good for me. More than like, pressing oh the attack God. and wagering my stamina Look offensively. at that. Look at the guy. St I'm pointing with my finger like you're here. But I'll use the mouse. Look at this guy here. He's attacking the guy behind the guy in front of him. Oh my God. Ubisoft. Hire me. I'll fix your game. Pressing the attack and... Look. He gets staggered on the second hit, not the first hit. What is this fucking Counter-Strike? <laughs> you know how on Counter-Strike you shoot the enemies and sometimes it doesn't register? You're like, where did my bullet go? Maybe that's what's going on here. Gaben! Have you been messing with Assassin's Creed? Yeah, devs before put effort, yeah. And it showed too. Uh, saving money, making a solid animation play, and not get cut to go into another. Yeah. Cutting corners, man. Taking shortcuts. Minimal effort, maximum profit. Literally spitting in the face of their uh, old fan base. That, and that fan base is the reason why they got all their money to make these games. Like. Spit in their face, make these fucking janky ass games for casuals. What it does mean is that attacking can be safely reserved for enemies who will rarely. This is why they lost all respect. Heavies, since you can't parry those anyway. And it's so sad when they make a game like this to to be like, oh old Assassin's Creed fans, please come back. Look, we made this game for you. Oh, so what? It was supposed to be an ex a, a mini expansion to another main game that we had to fucking make make it a main a main mini game just to bring you back and take your money here is this what you wanted here you go here you go little fans now fuck off we're gonna make a samurai fucking assassin <laughs> and then a couple of years from now they're gonna be like oh please come back we'll make an we'll make the next assassin's game assassin's creed game uh like this one, like Mirage. Enemy blocks you. You are at huge frame. But they don't know that we're, what we want is actually the crisp, the crispy, smooth gameplay of Assassin's Creed Unity, like a dense city design with a lot of people and shit going on around you. Good characters who fit in the time period, and a good ass story, man, and the music. Uh, iconic music, none of this bullshit, generic bullshit ass music. Come on, man. Use a tool to steal back your turn or get ready to defend because you cannot greed for more light or heavy attacks if you've just been blocked. You will get hit out of it. Tools are a massive supplement to combat and they deal the same kind of damage both in and like, out. Like, they had some good things going on with this game from what I, what I can see, but still, come on. Which means sometimes a good knife headshot in the middle of a fight after this a hack and slash bullshit attacks. It does not fit, in my opinion, in this game. Give you space to breathe. I recommend turning off the aim assist on tools in the options menu immediately because it's actually just bad and tends to mess like a finishing animation. There is cool. Often than help you, but if you're someone who doesn't rely on precision hits or headshots, you can. Like this guy, for example, is a heavy guy. If you attack him with light attacks, and he does not react, that's fine. That is fine. Look, he's a big guy, heavily armored, coming at your ass, fucking, but to give it to you, DMX style. Look, attacks him once. Oh, whoa, I didn't even notice that. Your attack bounce, bounces back. Damn. Okay, that's cool. So it's cool if he doesn't react there. Yeah, that's my point. But it even uh, rebound. The attack that he made there. Combo and something I relied on a lot after parrying. Pressing but when you're attacking a random guy and then he just he acts like nothing's going on. Like in situations where there's only one left, constantly pushing them with heavies makes them very unlikely to block you the way they'll deflect your lights. 
and since there is no one else around to save your stamina for, it's a good way to finish a fight. When your stamina is out, you can't dodge and your own attacks are weakened, so saving a tool you can quick use or put into the enemy when this happens is wise. If you take damage during a fight, which you probably will, Asasino, you, can Asasino. you can carry two of these. With a skill, you can carry three. So, not a lot of healing in this game, and considering hard will kill you in two or three hits, that means you can't make a lot of mistakes either. I that's fine, that's cool. Enjoyable. I just wish the pace of combat on hard was overall a little bit faster, which is an issue I had in Unity as well, which this game... No, I think Unity's combat was good. It had, it was uh, heavy. It wasn't uh, light, you know, you could feel the hits. And and when you, when you would parry on time, you would be rewarded. With a nice, beautiful, clean finishing animation. Obviously draws inspiration from. Fighting one, two, or three guards can be fun. As a hidden one, you still have the capacity to kill your foes in combat, but you equally have the capacity to skip fights by using your tools or creativity and instant kill enemies without letting them fight back, even post detection. Generally, oh, we saw this already. Fail state. Mirage wants you to avoid it, and you'll want to avoid it too, because stealth is so unbelievably strong, so fast, and so fun in this game that it is definitively the path of least resistance. In my entire playthrough, I didn't have a single BS detection. Nothing like weird instant detects from Unity. Nothing like telepathic guards wall hacking my position like in Valhalla. In fact, SSI trick or visual lore is totally back too and very reliable. Wait That's good. SSI to get some yellow in it and then hide. He'll come to you for a stab. To start off with, you're a thief, which means you're more concerned with taking things than you are with taking lives, or even knocking people out, which isn't typically necessary. If someone really has a mission critical item, it's gonna be on their hip and you can just- See, the gameplay complements the main character. The main character is, is, is a thief. Someone who hides, you know, takes away from the shadows. Makes sense why he's sneaking all, all around, why he, why he knows how to sneak around and strike from the shadows. But then having a Viking do all this shit, it just doesn't uh, doesn't work. Doesn't make much sense. Him, it informs part of his gameplay identity throughout the rest of the game. You're never really gonna stop stealing things. There's never a time pickpocketing becomes unimportant. Pickpocketing starts a quick time event. You have to time right in order to steal something without being detected. I think this game should have been a main game, but it's a mini game. Or maybe with the same, uh, yeah, like, like this mechanic here, they had it after or since Origins with the bird. All oh, the animations, though. They found it less useful than the other options. Tools add so much to stealth in this game. And while they're not quite as necessary for success as they were in Unity, all of your existing tool mindsets from that game. Here effortlessly, and you can I miss Unity's combat tactics. It's got a bit and of classic parkour. DNA too, though. Most notably in how using a tool in combat makes enemies vulnerable to stabs. Sleep dart a guy or smoke people in the middle of a fight. You can hit and blade them. Stealth layouts and level design is generally very strong and enjoyable. I can see myself playing and replaying this game a lot. There were more to prepare for you. The main assassinations in Mirage feature the same type of scout, find opportunities, alter the environment, access the target, kill them, and escape. No, it's reminiscent classic. of AC1, Unity, Syndicate, and I guess the Siege of Paris. Closer to the recent games than the AC1 to be honest, but the influence is there. Before you access a main assassination, you need to investigate that target, mm -hmm. find out who they are, where they're yeah. going to be. This typically starts with you visiting a bureau. But the cool thing about Mirage is that that's AC1 uh, st uh, style right there. Pretty cool. Like you gotta gather information about the target, and you know plan your attack carefully. But the Order of the Ancients or Cult of Cosmos screens you remember from the past few games. That basically is the entire game. All of Mirage completely anchors around the investigation screen. It's so committed to this structure that the game doesn't even have a normal mission tracker or traditional quest log of any kind. You're not doing quests, you're doing investigations. You're not choosing your next I like that. You know, you just you don't just see the boss somewhere and jump at him. Careful planning co quotation marks. Yeah, because uh you know 
they give you the target if you go there, attack him randomly. You either fail the mission or you just get jumped by 5,000 guards. So like if you want to take him down nice and clean, you know, you can, uh, with a bit of planning, you know when he's fucking alone behind a corner or when, you're, when the guards are taking a shit or not looking. That's the moment to strike, you know, that kind of shit. Me rushing it anyways. I mean, that's also, I guess, an option as long as the mission is like, you failed. Which I guess it's not the case anymore. You're following a lead. Anything you need to actually keep track of is in your investigation. Like team. in uh, Unity, for example, you could uh, do. You, you could pick how they give you a target, and you choose how to execute him, like how to assassinate him. You could go, you know, jump from the fucking roof and attack him, and then fight all his guards. Or attack him and take him out, throw a smoke bomb and disappear, and then have a chase or attack him in the shadows when he's not expecting it. They even had separate cutscenes for uh, different assassinations, I think, which was pretty cool. And even though you could call this a quest log but a little to the left, I found that it was a decent midpoint between something like AC1 and what you get chasing down target intel in Valhalla. I do wish it aired a little more toward the AC1 vibe, but what's here is okay. Every target's investigations are anchored to an assassin bureau, and as you kill lower ranking members of the order, you get info on higher ranking ones as well. Yeah, that's, yeah. Investigations can take the shape of anything, and some this of them like are particular callbacks to AC1, which I found charming. In one of them, you might have to kill some guards with another hidden one who needs help, similar to Altair's informer investigations. In another, you might have to race a hidden one to a specific location, which was a bold move on the dev part, but I think it speaks to the fact that, although basic, movement here has just enough that you could feasibly succeed or fail at this race, though it still feels a little ambitious, considering there's still not that much you're actually doing with your hands. Of course, there's a bunch of sitting on benches and eavesdropping, doesn't That's cool. Bench. You can eavesdrop from any hiding spot now. I just like to do it from benches because I'm a nostalgic bastard. Throwing knife me. Hell yeah. The boxes themselves do concern me a little, as most of them seem to be more concerned with being big puzzles than with actually offering a huge amount of freedom on how to reach a target. The reason I say working into a bird to your trusty wooden. eagle friend. Air sky hacking <laughs> instead of wall hacking. <laughs> You see them, you see the enemies from the bird's eye view. Bird hacking. Don't give that freedom is because I only played the game once and I didn't have the time to properly check by running through them again. As an example, in the first black box. I don't know. To me, this is very immersion breaking. All this HUD, you know, in your face. All this shit. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's just me, but I like to turn that shit off. Seeing that red right there to draw the target it always reminds me hey hey you're playing a video game don't forget you're playing a game don't get immersed make sure you, you, there's a fucking big ass silhouette of an enemy behind the, a mountain behind a wall you know don't forget something don't get immersed in the game the target you can't actually enter his quarters to do a normal still kill on him like you, you can probably turn that off so at least i appreciate that it's an option, but the default options are like this. Any other guard. Fucking Top hot right, shit bullshit everywhere. In a single player game, you know, like I'm not saying multiplayer games. In multiplayer games like MMOs and shit, who cares what your HUD is like? Single player game, I like to be immersed, you know. So I prefer Actually, that shit to be for put to a minimum. Assassinations than something like Unity or Syndicate. Just because the power of main assassinations in those games was the fact that you could go for all the environmental stuff, yep. or you could choose to find your own approach and yep. challenge the raw level design itself, treating it as just an extra hard stealth environment without engaging the contextual interactions. I don't actually know how viable that is in Mirage, so if there's one thing about main assassinations that we still gotta find out as a community, it's that. But what I can tell you is that each one felt really good to figure out and finish my first time through them. When I say they're like puzzles, I really mean it. Two of them in particular, one taking place in a bazaar and... Exploration is always cool. I mean, 
exploring uh, this is what made me want to even try origins and odyssey exploring ancient ancient egypt man and the the pyramids uh and how they recreated the ancient cities and shit uh that was so cool like i had to forget that i was playing an assassin's creed game to be able to do that ride a camel on the sand dunes and shit and then in odyssey exploring ancient greek and ancient greece not greek and the fucking uh you meet historical characters that shit was cool it does even the things that seem but iconic they were just not assassin's creed games RPG creeds, when you put those things into a city kind of just work even better because this is cool because it's just one city like just one the kinds one of challenges dense that city get when it comes to navigating areas you're not supposed to yeah too casual exactly it's just we're casuals now red dead redemption 2 beats ac in that dude red dead redemption 2 is an amazing amazing game holy shit i mean that game every cutscene every music piece every line dialogue environment i just love the shit out of that game it's my top three games and i played a lot many many games red dead redemption 2 man if you like that game that means I like you more. <laughs> that means you have good taste. Because that game... Yeah, like you said. Work of art, man. Holy shit, what a game. Red Dead Redemption 2, man. You can feel everywhere in the map there was, there was love put there. In the animations. You see how clean those animations are? When you're playing... When you're riding a horse, when you can even lead a horse by the by the bridle, you can make a campfire. Yeah, chill out in the wild, watch the sunrise. Fucking brew some coffee. Uh, have a chat with a random NPC who actually replies and says something interesting. Uh, ambushes in the road. Fucking. Uh, Oh, Driscoll's getting their asses whipped by Arthur. Easy peasy. And every character was interesting, man. Holy shit. What a game. Absolutely amazing game. When you're in a city, when you're in a populated area. Nah, yeah, that's in a different league. Assassin's Creed is like a few blocks down from that. Like, we're talking Ubisoft and Rockstar, man. <laughs> Rockstar, man. GTA 5. Feels more natural. Even Red Dead it's 1, I heard, is pretty amazing. Especially but I because haven't been able to play it yet. Boston's identity as a thief. You're not always a hidden one. You still got some burgling instincts in you. It's just sad at this point. Assassin's Creed, man. From how, how it used to be. And the potential it had to be amazing, it just fell off. Devs got lazy and greedy. It happens, I guess. I'm going to skip the story part here because I don't want, in case I decide to play it. don't want spoilers. Though I heard it takes place, this one, before Valhalla, and I have not played Valhalla. Um, yeah, so I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm so tempted to watch a uh, gameplay of uh, Assassin's, Creed, Assassin's Creed Unity. Okay, just a little bit.
No, YouTube, please. YouTube, YouTube, please. YouTube is like, bro, get back to your game, bozo. Rockstar spent so much love on Red Dead. Yeah, dude. And it shows. It shows. That's the, that's the beautiful part. You can tell by the game that you're playing that the devs put love in it. I'm glad you see that too, man. Damn. Red Dead Redemption 2. What an amazing game. And you, when it ended, you thought it was done. But they, get, they kept on giving you more and more. With uh, John Marston. Amazing. It's the same engine as GTA 5. What? Wait, really? Same engine as GTA 5, yet it kicks the living hell out of GTA. Huh. I didn't know that. I mean... I always view GTA like, you know, a fun, a game that focuses on fun, the fun aspect, which is cool when you, you know, it was, they always did them right. The, those games were always fun to play. And Red Dead 2 was more into realism and it had that mature feeling to it, which I really liked. You could tell it's a mature game. But I didn't know they were the same, uh, had the same engine. It's crazy how many different types of games you can make from one engine. Like, what the fuck? Come on, show me fucking YouTube, please. YouTube, YouTube, please. One more clip. Dude, Assassin's Creed Unity apparently had a multiplayer mode as well, where you could take targets down with the with the homies. But I don't know what happened to that. Let me see a little bit, man. Oh my god, this YouTube shit is bullshit. Like, what is this game? What is this website about? Horrific of manners, so I hope you won't mind. Dude, look at how smooth. And it lagged. <laughs> the video lagged. Or maybe the game lagged. It had a lot of flaws. But there's like... Fuck. AC Unity Parkour. There's someone who... Who makes it look good. Who, know, who knows how to fucking parkour. Yeah. Altair Stealth. My man. Look at how beautiful it looks. The the buildings look amazing. You had crowds, some of them popping in on your screen. Classic. Double assassination, beautiful animations. Ale! Throwing money to distra uh, distract uh, the guards. Sneaking in. Blind guards. Get wrecked, noob lul. Damn. While sliding. Excuse me. Coming through. Shut your ass up. You saw nothing. Oui, 
Okay. Gotta see that again. The f this the flip, man. I didn't even see that guy in the window. You can even go indoors, which was amazing. Oh, look at the design of the interior, man. The gold, the white marble, the red carpet. So beautiful, man. Bam. In from one window, out from another. He's tweaking. At least he's not attack attacking uh, normal dudes. He's attacking the homies. Bam, bam, one, two, three, bam. Bam, look at how seamless it is. Pool table. <laughs> Was it me? I don't recognize this outfit though. Must be a special one. That guy took a big L lul. Ah, found the target. Look at the interior design, it's so good. Bam, smoke bomb. Attack! Super slow motion. Got spotted! Better run! Out of my way! Guess that one didn't take a lot of careful preparation and careful planning. You could always uh, run away. BAM! Cinema! <laughs> Hit a tree. Do they even have haystacks anymore? See, this is what I'm talking about. A, a dense city with a lot of crowds and shit. And a lot of parkour mo uh, areas. Yeah, <laughs> when a tree stops your cinematic moment. <laughs> it was all part of the... Part of the script. Look at how he flipped him, fl flips him over, pulls his wee wee. Sons of bitches! Sons of bitches. Oh, 
Oh yeah, it was supposed to take place during the French Revolution. What the? Oh yeah, while uh, roaming around the city, you get you could see like guards extorting money from normal guys, normal citizens and shit. And you can either intervene or let it happen. Do 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 do. Easy. Must be the wind. Whoa. Who did that? If they try anything, shoot them. You'll go to the guillotine for this. Oh, it might. Sons of bitches. Silence. Oh, yeah, and everyone was British, apparently. <laughs> Had a British accent. I don't know why they did that. Merci, monsieur. I don't know what you need to say, but and then he switches to English. You can thank me by getting to the walls and stopping these killings. What? I can't hear you. What do we do with the bodies? Nah, leave them. Leave them. We'll just join them in a bit. Damn, he has the end game sword. I think. Look at the interior design. Damn. Like there's so much shit. Not be a joke. Bloody hell. Bloody hell, bruv. Hold fast, men. Cut them down. Protect the prisoners. Death to the traitors. Beat them back. Vive la revolution. Vive la re revolution. looked so good man bam 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 just dudes hanging around chilling damn damn Not a fan of liberty, mate. Damn, that guy took a tumble. Damn, look at the view. Wait. Gameplay guy, please show us the view. He's too busy doing the assassin thing. But just seeing those uh, buildings from the distance. Bam. Guards are not paying attention. They don't have ears, no problem. Yeah, folded hard. Sit down, son. Take a nap. We get a double pokey. Look around, man. Stop. Look around. Oh, man. Can't 
can't blame him. I didn't look around when I played. I didn't appreciate that shit back then. Blah, blah, oh, oh my god. Ah, funny, Napoleon. After uh, watching uh, Wine delivery for the palace. Round back. Ah, this is uh, one of the main missions. Yes, one of those uh, assassinate the target your own way kind of a mission. Damn, look at the view, man. But, but... That went away too fast. Uh, me no understand. Is this Portuguese? I'm guessing it's Portuguese because this guy has BR, which probably means Brazil. Continuar. Explore a area. Crie oportunidades. Yes, that's Portuguese. Let's go. Uh, esconderijos. That means entrances. No, no, no. That means exits. Entrada. Entra, entradas. Entradas means entrances. Guardas or guardas means guards. 69. Assassinatos unicos. Unique assassination. Z. There's only one. Oh, in this case, I guess there's only one. No, no, no. You could do, the, do it in multiple ways, but... They would give you like a unique one where you had a special cutscene if you do it their way. I think. Oh, means hideouts. Hideouts? Which one? <laughs> Entradas? Esconderijos? I guess hideouts for when you're getting chased. Oh, esconderijos. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's cool. This guy has a lot of cool videos. I used, I used to watch his videos a lot. Far Cry 6, creative stealth kills. Ghost of Tsushima stealth, stealth kills. Splinter Cell stealth kills. Metal Gear Solid, Hitman. That's a lot of cool videos, gameplay videos. John Wick playing Far Cry series. Best kill compilation shit. That's cool. I like that. Entradas is entrances. Okay. Damn, these dudes are redder than a hoe. <laughs> Just randomly pushing motherfuckers around. Yeah, I think this is this is a, this was a good Assassin's Creed game. You play as an assassin, and the story revolves around the Assassin's Creed, uh, the Order. With uh, twists and turns. And interesting uh, characters. The only thing it was missing though was... Again, the ambient music that you would hear in the Ezio trilogy. And... A better story. Story could have been better. Other than that, it's, I think it was good. And it was fucking a buggy, trash, glitchy mess at release. But that's classic. 
that's that's normal <laughs> because it's Ubisoft. They release broken shit and they fix it later. But other than that, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. <sighs> Chose the view. Doesn't really focus on the view, but he's on a mission. Yeah, you had guns too. Guns. Nobody heard that, don't worry. Not even that guy over there. They all they all have earplugs because of how loudly the crowds cheer when somebody gets hit with the classic guillotine beheading. Shit gets loud as hell. Can't blame him. Probably have the Beats by Dre headsets on. The cannons, dude. And the ambient lighting. It's pretty cool, pretty cool. The interiors are always uh, like clean, you know, like. Okay, that was unnecessary. Oh, hiding spot here. I wonder if they splattered blood on the floor. Who's gonna clean that? Oh shit, right in front of the other dude does not give a fuck. In front of those... Oh, okay. Wait. What you looking at now? The the clothing, the hairstyle and shit. <laughs> what the fuck? What a move. Yeah, now he's just killing everyone. Oh my god. Okay. That's Hmm. Pretty cool. I think this is the end of the nostalgia trip though. <laughs> Yar volume. Bro, I'd be laying in bed trying to fall asleep watching a YouTube video and some of these ads would come on and blast my ears off. I get so pissed. Like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> or I would be watching a, a CS2 demo. <laughs> And right as the guy about to make some cool kills, some headshots, he, sh he, he shoots the first bullet, bam, add in your face. <laughs> oh man. It used to be where you could open a video and you would see where the ad would play on the timeline. So here would be a, a yellow spot, here would be a yellow spot, and then you would skip to the end. Ah, what the fuck and that would remove the ads and then you go back to the beginning and watch the video that way but now I did that and I got the ad <laughs> what the fuck mm -hmm. oh man the graveyards were so cool and you could go to the crypts uh, beneath the city and unity 
uh, the catacombs which they do have in uh, Paris. Amazing. <laughs> Don't mind me, just farting and killing dudes and chilling. And bodies and on the floor, starvation everywhere. They nailed the atmosphere, I found. Like the lighting was gloomy, dark. Death was everywhere and baguettes were nowhere. Trying to be an assassin in AC Valhalla. Rolls in on a um, vacuum boat. I don't know, I might revisit the Assassin's Creed uh, franchise at some point. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe see what I was missing out on. Um, like for example, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, takes place in England. And oh, ninth century England. And I watched a TV show that took part, that took place around that same period. Um, I'm having memory issues. The Last Kingdom it was called, and I thought. I thought it was pretty good. But I stopped watching it. Uhtred, son of Uhtred. Had a cool main character. Who was struggling between his two identities. The Viking. Or... The not Viking. Uh, but there was a character in here. What, what was he called? The King Guy? The King Guy. Mr. King. I don't remember. But it would be cool to like visit and see England in that time period. Damn, so many, sh so much shit on the screen. Damage numbers. Not for me, not for me. Pew, pew, pew. Assassin's Creed 3. I played this game only once. It was okay. I didn't like it, but I also did not hate it. It was alright. Damn, so much snow. Can't see shit. Am 
What is going on on the screen? <laughs> Beleggen volgens Argenta. Robots Shut die beleggingsportefeuilles samenstellen. Nee. Stop complaining about Yasuke for some minutes and watch Connor's amazing fighting skills. This guy knows what's up. This game had some cool finishing animations. What the? <laughs> what the fuck is that? Damn, brutal. What the? Oh, damn. Get off that horse. Didn't see what happened to those bodies, but I'm guessing they got wrecked. See how they react to the to your attacks there? Bam, that's cool. Like you hit them and they react. They hit you and you react. Bam. He's like ugh, ugh, my throat. <coughs> Just remember, Diravello is a bitch. Rico Rodriguez reigns supreme. Hell yeah. Damn right. Rico all day. What is this shit? Oh, cinematic trailers. Oh man, I don't even want to watch it. Could be, I mean, I don't know if the story, its story might be good. But I kind of gave up on Ubisoft. For a quite some time. But I'm looking for one badass trailer here. Uh, damn, the Ezio, Ezio trailers were so good. Okay, this one. Damn, there's so many old, old ones. Road to Masyaf. Oh, that voice. By the way, Ezio's voice actor is the same one that voices Rico Rodriguez. Did you know that? That's fucking cool. Give me warning that the road to Masyaf is overrun by mercenaries and bandits. Not native to this land. Oh, this brings me back. And by the way, fuck the other trailer with the other music. This is the right music. It has the voiceover, it has the strong emotional music. This one's good for sure. For real? Yeah! I was surprised too. I was I was probably already done with the game when I found out. <laughs> so it took me a while. But it did feel familiar. I love this trailer. I dare to know. Oh, I dare to guess. When I first set out from Roma ten months ago, I did so with a single purpose. Discover what our father did not. did not. In a letter written the year before my birth. Look how good it looks. Of a library hidden beneath the stones of Masyaf Castle. A sanctum full of invaluable w wisdom. wisdom. Ugh. Who did that? What will I find when I arrive there? Who will greet me? Who will greet me? Ah. A host of eager Templars. As I fear most strongly. Look, look. 
when the bead drops as he jumps onto his enemy and takes him down. The bigger Templars, as I fear most strongly, or nothing but the whistling of a Bam! Holy wind. Okay, I made a noise. Only. Or nothing but the whistling of a cold and lonely wind. Masyaf has not been home to the assassins for almost 300 years now. Can we still claim it for our own? Are we welcome there? Uh, I am wary of this fight, Claudia. Not because I am tired, but because our struggle seems to move in one direction only. Towards chaos. Today, I have more questions than that answers. answers. Bam! Double this blades. This is why I've come so far. To find clarity. To find the wisdom left, left behind, behind by, by the, the great, great Altair. Altair. So that I may better understand the purpose of our fight. And, and my, my place in it. it. Unhand me, you fool! anything happen to me Claudia should my skills fail me or my ambition lead me astray, astray. do not seek retribution or revenge in my, my memory, name my memory but fight to continue the search for truth so that all may benefit my story is one of many thousands and the world will not suffer if, if it, it ends too soon. soon oh but it did suffer the whole franchise did as an old man at that point and he was still kicking ass what a badass trailer badass music badass voiceover ha okay I'm just gonna skip over what I don't want to you know, Assassin's Creed 3's the cinematic trailer was actually good. Oh my god. It had that emotional uh, hit to it that made you made your hairs on your uh, arms stand straight. When he after the one when he takes over that horse and rides into battle The music. I watch them fight mm. and die in the name of freedom. But they for who? Liberty and justice. But for who? But for who? But for who? Look at how it switches between the eagle and then him. I think. Damn. Let me through, man. Get out of my way. Got a problem with this horse? I'm the solution. Ain't nothing. Bam! Goes in, Giga Chad. Takes out 200 motherfuckers. I think the music is fucking muted. Or, uh, yeah. They muted the music. Or, uh, yeah. Edit it out. Edit it out. Edit it out. Bam, bam! One, two, three, bam! That's AC4, but AC4 we already know is good. Nothing cray cray.
Where is the first one? Where's my boy Altair? Oh my. Yeah, they changed uh, the music to avoid copyright shit. What? Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood. Revelations. Did they actually forget to put the, f the trailer from the first game? They actually did. How dare you forget about the first game? Almost tapped the Witcher. Uh, almost tapped it again. Assassin's Creed. One trailer. Oh yeah, they made a movie. We don't talk about the movie. This game came out in 2007, I think. By the time he was spotted, it was already too late. Bam! Iconic. Drake has got in pace. That's an Ezio thing, but still. No, not the pot. Dead end? Or is it? You see him? It's right there. They could have just despawned him from that from the scene, but they actually kept him in there. Like over there. It's like walking back. Ba bam! You, I was, you never see me. I was never there. Man, hearing the voiceover of this trailer brought me back. Yeah, this is. I don't like this one. You don't hear Ezio's voice, and it doesn't have the emotional strength of the music. Hey. 
Nah. No. No, no, no. Trailer. Okay. No, not the shitty one. No. Wait. <laughs> All right. Has to be this one. I'm just taking over the or taking away the voiceover. It's fucked up. Prepared for the worst. Like, come on. In. Like Claudia, my dearest sister. I have been in Acre a week now, safe and in high spirits, but prepared. Completely for different. This is so much better. The men and women who have fed and sheltered me here also give me warning that the road to Masyaf is overrun by mercenaries and bandits, not native to this land. What this could mean. I dread, I dread to, to know. Fuck, I keep messing it up. It's I dread to guess. I did so with a single purpose. purpose. To discover what our father did, did not. not. In a letter written the year before my birth, he makes mention of a library hidden beneath the stones of Masyaf Castle. A sanctum full of invaluable wisdom. wisdom. Damn, when you hear that fucking, I don't know what it's called. Brass. Brass something something. Full of invaluable wisdom. Rather than that bum 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 bum. I just don't like that song. Full of That's all I like. So what will I find when I arrive there? Who will greet me? A host of eager Templars, as I fear most strongly. And then or the slow build up and release of the music right here at this point. Me. And then the beautiful vocals. The bigger Templars, as I fear most strongly. Or nothing but the whistling of a cold and lonely wind. Dun 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 but because our struggle seems to move in one direction only, towards chaos. Today, mm -hmm. I have more questions than answers. This is why I've come so far. To find clarity. To find the wisdom left behind by the great Altair. So that I may better understand the purpose of our fight. And, and my place in it. it. It's just not the same without... Without uh, Ezio's voice and the beautiful music in the back. Should anything happen to me, Claudia? Should my skills fail me, or my ambition lead me astray? Do not seek retribution or revenge in my memory, but fight to continue the search for truth, so that all may benefit. My story is one of many thousands, and the world will not suffer if it ends too soon. Damn, so fucking good. So, so good. Alright.
<laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Don't just standing there waiting for hours. Where did this motherfucker go? Come on, wimp. Well, 